Jessica Frost Ballas here with the next installment of the Interactive Cards by Jess series for Simon Says Stamp. Today's card is a little more intricate than others, so the video is a tad bit longer than my normal videos, but bear with me. I really think it's worth it. This card has two interactive features. First, it's a bendy card, but it also lights up. The light up element is created separately from the bendy card, so you could skip that part, but I highly recommend giving it a try because it really gives your card that extra something special. So let's get started. Today's card features the adorable Dragon Wishes and Me and My Dragon stamp sets from Mama Elephant. I start by using my Misty to stamp the large flying dragon, the little girl rider, and two smaller dragons with Copic Friendly Intense Black Ink from Simon Says Stamp. I stamp them twice to get good even coverage. Next I take a scrap of vellum and stamp the large flames from me and my dragon using the same Copic Friendly ink. I'll be folding this vellum in half later, so I stamp the flames on the bottom half of the piece of vellum. Next I create my background by blending distress inks onto a large piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. The piece of cardstock is larger than a 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half panel, so I have a place to hold the paper without worrying about fingerprints. After it dries, I'll trim it down to an A2 panel. I want a dark pink sky, so I blend worn lipstick, abandoned coral, seedless preserves, and black soot distress inks across the panel. Once I add a new color, I go back with the previous color to blend them together. I like using Bristol Smooth for distress ink blending because it seems to hold the ink on the surface of the paper a little longer, which gives me more time to achieve a really smooth blend. You'll see when I add the seedless preserves that I came in a little heavy-handed and ended up with lots of marks from my foam pad, but they easily blended out. The bottom of my sky will be covered, so I didn't worry too much about bringing the color to the very bottom of the panel. Next I do all of my Copic coloring. I start by using R27, R24, Y35, and Y38 to color my flame on the vellum. You won't get a really bright color when you're coloring on vellum, but since that will be over the lighted element, I just wanted to give it a little hint of color so when the card isn't lit up you'd still see the color of the flames. Then I use neutral gray markers for my large dragon. I know it's not the norm, but I prefer to start with my darkest shades first and blend out to my lightest. I kept his body color pretty dark, but lightened him up with some coral pink wings using R20, R21, R22, and R24. I color the girl's outfit with the same R shades and then used E42 and 47 and 49 for her hair and E50 and E53 for her face. I add a little blush to her cheeks with R20. 
Next, I color my baby dragons using the same coral pink shades and then use coordinating guys to die cut everything except the flames. I fold my vellum in half and adhere it together. Then I die cut elements from the Kingdom Trio to use for my background and Bendy card. I die cut the mountains from black cardstock, the second layer from silver glitter paper, and the third layer from dark gray cardstock. I vary the height of each element so that each layer can be easily seen from the front of the card. Next, I stamp part of my sentiment on the black layer with Versamark and heat emboss it with white embossing powder. Then I stamp the rest of my sentiment on the dark gray cardstock and heat emboss it with the same white embossing powder. I adhere the black mountains to my Distress Inked panel and you can see now why I wasn't concerned about covering the full panel with distressings. To create my bendy card, I score the silver glitter panel a quarter inch from the edge of the left side and score the dark gray panel a quarter inch from the right side. I fold the score lines and those edges will be what eventually adheres to the back of my Distress Inked background panel to create the curved elements of the Bendy card. Next, I create tabs on the opposite ends from the score lines. I use a ruler to lightly sketch a line a quarter inch from the edge and then freehand draw the tabs before fussy cutting them. I erase the pencil marks and then I create the slots for my tabs. On the background panel, I mark 4 inches from the left side of the panel, move my ruler up slightly and again mark 4 inches from the left side. Then I lightly sketch a vertical line connecting those two marks. I place the silver glitter tab along that sketch line as a guide and mark either side of the tab. I use the ruler to connect those marks to create a very thin slot. Next I use a straight edge and an X-Acto knife to cut out the slot. You'll see that I traded out the flexible plastic ruler for a metal edged sturdy ruler. This is the hardest cut to make because you're cutting through two layers of cardstock. All the other cuts will be much easier. I erase my pencil marks and tuck the silver glitter tab into the slot just to make sure it fits. I repeat the process on my silver glitter tab, marking a slot 2 inches from the scored edge. Because I used glitter paper, I drew my markings on the back of the paper so I could see them more easily. It's a little easier to see this slot that I cut on white cardstock when it's laying on top of a black background. Once 
Once again, I erase the pencil markings and test the tab to make sure it fits. At this point, your card is ready to be assembled if you're not adding the lighted element. You'd simply fold the scored line of the silver glitter panel and adhere it to the left side of the background panel. Then fold the scored line of the dark gray panel and adhere it to the right side of the background panel. Add all your dragons, tuck the tabs into the slots to create the bendy curves, and that's it. But I want to kick it up a notch and create a lighted panel so that my dragon fire really glows. I recommend taking a moment to look at these various panels of cardstock I've marked in the photo. You can also find this photo on the Simon Says Stamp blog for future reference. On the left, you can see the background panel that in my particular card design is the distress inked background with the black mountains. Below that are the two panels, the silver glitter panel and the dark gray panel, and you can see the measurements for all the cut and score lines. On the right side are the elements for my light up feature. The panel where I will build my circuit, two pull tabs cut to two inches by a half inch, and two switches cut to half inch by half inch squares. First I tape the flames die to the front of the distress inked background panel and run it through my die cutting machine. Then I trace the die opening on an A2 piece of white cardstock. This will serve as a reference for where I place my LED light stickers. I also trace the slot as a guide so that I don't accidentally place foam mounting tape over it as that would interfere with the bendy card slots later. Next I take a ruler and draw three lines a quarter inch apart above my slot guide but below the flames. This is where my pull tab will go. I like to use pull tabs for my lighted cards so that the light isn't constantly on because it helps to conserve the battery. Next I draw a tiny line at the quarter inch and one and a quarter inch mark of my middle line. I connect those lines to create another tiny slot. I cut out the slot with my metal edged ruler and X-Acto knife. Then I use a 1 8 of an inch corner rounder to round one side of my pull tabs. I use part of a sentiment from the Lawn Fawn Push Here stamp set to stamp the word pull on the rounded end of one pull tab. Now it's time to create the circuit. I've been using these lights for years, but every time I use them, I still draw my circuit first just to double check everything before I get started. I start by tracing the triangle shape of the light sticker over the flames using the plastic guide. If you don't have the guide, you can just sketch a small triangle. I originally planned to use three lights, which is why I drew three triangles, but you'll see that I eventually remove one before finishing the card. I also marked the positive and negative sides of the triangles as a reminder, as well as the color of the light stickers I want to use. Then I place the battery on the left side of the panel and trace around it. Finally, I drew a template for my circuit. I drew a line connecting the positive side of the light sticker to the pull tab slot. I drew a second line connecting the negative side of the light stickers to the negative underside of the battery. I drew a third line connecting the positive top side of the battery to the other side of the pull tab slot. At the moment, you can see that my circuit isn't a complete circle because of the pull tab slot. Next, it's time to lay the copper tape. I start by inserting the end of the copper tape through the pull tab slot and taping it down about a quarter inch to the back side of the panel. Then I follow the circuit I've drawn, laying down the copper tape along the positive side of the light stickers. I use my bone folder to make sure the copper tape is nice and smooth. Then I lay the copper tape along the negative side of the light stickers. 
To get sharp edges, I fold the copper tape back on itself to get a sharp crease and then fold it along the crease to change directions. I add a little ATG adhesive over the battery template and then lay the copper tape over the adhesive. I smooth the copper tape with my bone folder again and then stick the battery to the adhesive. I insert my last piece of copper tape through the pull tab slot and tape it down a quarter inch to the back side before following the line I drew to the top side of the battery. Then I apply my Chibitronics LED light stickers over the copper tape. I use red, yellow, and white stickers, though I later remove the white light. At this point, you can test the circuit by touching a piece of copper tape to the pull tab slot. If the lights light up, then your circuit is complete. As you can see, my white light didn't initially light up, but after moving it slightly to the right and pressing down firmly, it came on. Humidity can sometimes affect the stickiness of the LED stickers, so for extra security, I like to add a little piece of copper tape over the negative and positive sides of the LED stickers to help them stay stuck. I smooth the copper tape with my bone folder and test the circuit once more. You'll notice that I test the circuit often just to make sure nothing has shifted or come unstuck before I seal up the card. Next it's time to create the pull tab switch. First I fold the two half inch squares in half and place them back to back to create an X shape. I insert half of the squares through the pull tab slot and fold back the edges so that it stays in place flat inside the slot. I slide the switch to the far right side of the slot and align a piece of copper tape so that it connects the two sides of the circuit. Then I remove the switch from the slot and fold the copper tape along all sides of the X shape until it overlaps, and then I cut off the excess. Then I insert the switch back into the slot and fold down the sides so it lays flat. If you move the switch to the left, the lights go off. At this point, I like to slide the switch back and forth several times to make sure the copper tape is nice and smooth. Then I move the switch to the far left side of the slot. I apply a little ATG adhesive to the top of the switch and adhere the stamped pull tab over it. Then I flip the panel over, apply adhesive to the other side of the switch and the end of the pull tab and adhere the second pull tab on top. Now you can pull the pull tab to control the lights. I adhere my vellum flame to the back of the distress inked panel and line it up over the circuit panel to see what it would look like. This is the point where I realized I didn't really like how the white light looked, so I simply removed it. I carefully peeled up the top layer of copper tape, 
pulled that light sticker off put a, and put a little more copper tape back down over the negative and positive sides of the remaining light stickers. And it's assembly time. I adhere the scored edge of the glitter panel to the left side of the distressed inked background panel and the scored edge of the dark gray panel to the right side of the distressed inked background panel. Then I add a double layer of foam mounting tape to the circuit panel. I probably used more tape than necessary, but I wanted it to be really sturdy. When applying the foam tape, I carefully add it around the pull tab switch to create a barrier so the pull tab won't shift from side to side. This is also where it's important to avoid placing foam tape over the bendy slot guide you traced earlier. I also tried to create a barrier of foam tape around the light stickers in the general shape of the die to contain the light, otherwise the light can actually shine through the cardstock in unflattering ways. Once you apply the tape, remove the adhesive backing and carefully line up the distressed inked panel over the circuit panel and press firmly to adhere. I add the dragons with a little ATG adhesive and tuck the girl behind the large dragon. Off camera, I applied a healthy dose of Spectrum Noir, clear sparkle to each dragon, and a few accents with a black Jelly Roll glaze pen. I also adhere a card base to the back of the circuit panel, being careful to avoid putting adhesive on the pull tab. You could actually write your greeting inside the bendy flaps, but I like to seal the card completely when there's a pull tab, just to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. Finally, you can tuck in the tabs to give that extra dimensional look to the card and pull the pull tab to see the dragon flames light up. As you can see, I turned off my desk lamps to give you a better look at the flames turning on and off. And that's it. I hope this inspires you to give Bendy Light Up Cards a try. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll be back next month with a new interactive card. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, happy crafting!